What's up guys, Mikko here, and we have seen Tether FUD in the market for years now, but it never seems to actually amount to anything. Well guys, in this video, I wanna show you why I actually think this time is different, and we could actually be on the verge of something massive happening to Tether the company. Guys, in this video, I wanna share with you my thoughts on this, and take into account, I have been one of the people saying forever that Tether will not have a death spiral, Tether will not depeg. In this video, I wanna give you my opinion on this entire situation, and show you something pretty crazy happening right now in the United States. Guys, you are definitely going to want to see this. Towards the end of the video, though, I also want to talk about the investment thesis behind XRP. Guys, I have had a lot of people coming to me and saying, wouldn't I be better just putting money in a small market cap project that has the potential to 5 to 10x? Guys, at the end of this video, I want to talk to you why that's not necessarily the case. Make sure to stick around for that. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Thank you to everyone who takes the time to like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Guys, these two things really do help me out so much. Also, if you ever need a place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said, though, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So guys, just a quick shout out before we get into it. If any of you want to invest in Ripple, the company, but aren't accredited, make sure to check out the Beyond Broke Discord channel. It's the pinned tweet on my X account. It's also in the description of this video. You'll get your first month free if you use Mickle one mo and this will actually allow you to invest in Ripple equity. Guys, I want to keep this short and sweet, but I just want to bring this opportunity to your attention because I know a lot of people are heavily invested an XRP who watched this channel. Many of those people want to own Ripple equity but can't. So guys, this might be your solution right here. I want to move on though and talk about something happening in the United States right now that I believe is absolutely shocking and that is a full-on campaign against Tether. Now guys, I want to be candid about this because I am never afraid to admit when I am wrong and one of the things I have been saying for a while is I don't think there is a scenario where Tether depegs. I don't think there is a scenario where Tether is shut down. But if we really are watching a full court press against Tether the company, I think some of those things might be more possible than I initially gave them credit for. Guys, I want to start off and talk about something that I believe is very, very significant to understand, and that's that the United States looks like they're potentially going to try to ban Tether. Guys, this came across from one of my subscribers earlier today, and what you are going to notice is that the United States is spending massive amounts of money to scare people from using Tether. Watch this. It's absolutely shocking. Is Tether the next FTX? They refuse to be independently audited. S&P gave Tether a high risk rating. They're chronically under investigation. Fraud, priest manipulation. Maybe that's why Tether is the go-to cryptocurrency for the world's worst. The cartels that flood our streets with fentanyl. Global human trafficking networks. Tether thrives in the shadows. You've been warned. Tether. Tethered to corruption. So guys, obviously there is a campaign being run against Tether in the United States to try to scare people away from the currency. Now guys, if it is true that Tether does have some backing issues, it is possible that this could be the type of thing to make a bank run happen. And I want to be very clear, almost everything I have seen says that Tether is in fact backed. We have actually seen people who provide custody for Tether's treasuries say that they have seen Tether's treasuries and it amounts to the amount of Tether in the market. But who knows, maybe they're in on it, right? It's impossible to know. What we are watching, though, regardless of whether or not we get the death spiral, is the United States, in my opinion, putting a de facto ban on Tether. We're about to get stablecoin legislation that we know would essentially outlaw Tether in the United States. We know that MICA makes it very, very hard for Tether to comply, and a lot of exchanges like Uphold are actually delisting Tether. Guys, I think what we are going to watch happen at minimum is Tether pushed to the unregulated parts of the financial system, while the regulated parts of the financial system open their arms to things like USDC and RLUSD Ripple's new stablecoin. Guys, the stablecoin opportunity is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity, and the biggest player is getting kicked out of the most important markets right now. I believe this is the perfect opportunity for Ripple to step in and absolutely dominate and create one of the most important stablecoin products in the market. Guys, we know Ripple is already working with central governments to create fiat CBDCs. These are essentially just the highest quality stablecoins you can have. 
Ripple is now stepping into the private stablecoin market and replacing what is looking to be a massive hole left by Tether. Guys, whether or not Tether death spirals or not, I think that's still up in the air. But I think it is obvious that the regulated parts of the future financial system are not going to let Tether in, and that's why they are running these campaigns against Tether right now. Guys, we'll have to see what takes place in the long run, but it is obvious to me that we are about to have a massive hole in this market, and I don't think it's any coincidence that Ripple is stepping in at the perfect time to replace it. Guys, I want to talk about something else real quick before we get into the investment thesis stuff behind XRP, because I actually thought this was very interesting. And this is actually someone who's close to the Ethereum Foundation and Ethereum development team coming out and saying that, hey, you really can't scale blockchains through layer twos. Now, this is something I've thought for a while, but it's not really in the XRP topic side of stuff, so I never really got into it. But one of the things that never made sense to me was what's the point in building a layer two on top of Ethereum if that layer two is just essentially siphoning all the value away from the main chain? It's one of the biggest issues I see with the Ethereum setup. It's so convoluted. You have all these different players essentially all saying they're scaling Ethereum, but they're just building a new blockchain that's pulling the value away from Ethereum. And this is extremely different from what we're seeing with the XRP ledger. The XRP ledger is instead using side chains, which are essentially chains adjacent to the XRP ledger that still leverage XRP as a native asset for settlement and liquidity on both chains. The XRP side chains use XRP as underlying liquidity, but ultimately just add features to the XRP ledger that the XRP ledger doesn't have. Their side chains are positioned parallel to keep the XRP ledger still at the center of all the activity. What we're seeing in the EVM case is it's kind of just endless projects building on top of Ethereum, doing all the same things Ethereum does, only better. And I think this is a massive issue because it just begs the question, if these chains have the same functionality one day as Ethereum, why would you use Ethereum? So guys, I just think this is something really interesting to take into account. The other day on the channel, we actually talked about something else in regards to Ethereum in terms of the amount of nodes on the network actually being way larger than you actually need. Guys, what we see is time after time, David Schwartz and the team behind the XRP ledger actually got a lot of stuff right in the early days that many people are figuring out right now. Guys, Ethereum really took the approach that you will build as much as possible as fast as you can and just see if it works out. And it seems like a lot of it did work out, but a lot of it didn't. The XRP ledger chose slow and steady, build these things out and make sure the chain remains fast and efficient. I think that's the strategy that's really going to win out because what we're learning is a lot of the decisions made by the Ethereum team in the early days are really backfiring now when it comes to creating sustainable products on these networks. Guys, I want to finish this video off and talk about one last thing, and that is the investment thesis behind XRP, because I get a lot of people asking me, right, if there are smaller market cap projects out there, why don't I just invest into those? And guys, I think it's so important to understand. XRP is a blue chip cryptocurrency chasing one of the biggest market opportunities out there. It doesn't matter what your market cap is at the end of the day. What matters is the opportunity you are chasing. You could have a tiny market cap project, but if that tiny market cap project is chasing a tiny market cap opportunity, well, there's not that much for growth, right? And even if you have a large market cap project like XRP, but it's chasing a multi-trillion, if not quadrillion dollar market, well, there is still a lot of room for price appreciation. And I think it's one of the biggest thing people miss. People look at market cap, but in a void of the value that is being produced. And when I look at who's on Ripple's board, who is working with XRP, I know that these are the players that can actually drive the kind of value Ripple wants to drive into these protocols. I see a lot of these smaller protocols with a lot of hopes and promises, but they don't have the team to actually execute on those hopes and promises. They don't have the teams to get them in the room with the central banks, right? Ripple's already building CBDCs for central banks. It's not like oh, their partners might be able to get them there, they are already there. All these other projects, right? I think it's a question if they could even get into a room with one central banker, let alone how long it's going to take to achieve that. They just don't have someone like Rosie Rios at the top level who has met with these different politicians of all these different nations with her time in office. 
They just don't have the kinds of people who used to work at Uber and Amazon to open those doors and eventually build out these payment systems for the largest tech companies out there. It's one of the biggest things I think people misunderstand. If you were to invest in the top companies coming out of the dot-com bubble, right, the winning strategy wasn't necessarily to go pick all the micro cap stocks. It was to pick the most innovative companies, even if they were at a large market cap, that were essentially making the biggest transformations to the internet, right? It didn't take an expert in technology to see what Apple was doing in with the iPhone in the early days and say, okay, this is probably going to be pretty powerful, right? It didn't take an expert to see what Amazon was doing with their web services and with their e-commerce to say, okay, this is transformational to how we purchase things. Guys, it does not take an expert. It just takes someone who understands what's being built with conviction on how it's going to change the world as we know it. We have conviction in XRP because we know the benefits it adds to the financial system. We can see it. And a lot of people are waiting for the market to realize it alongside of them. And they're thinking because the market hasn't realized it yet, it means they might be wrong. Guys, I'm here to tell you that the best investments, the best theses are things that you understand before the market. And it does not mean you're wrong just because the market hasn't priced in what you figured out beforehand. In fact, it just means you're early and it means you're in a position to benefit most when everyone else figures it out. Guys, no one wants to be early to an investment because it's stressful. You worry about the ifs, you worry about the whens. But at the end of the day, if you're not early, you're late and there's no money to be made. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe really does mean so much. And for now, Mickle out.